Hello everyone, I'm David Puel, Research Trading Analyst and Associate Portfolio Manager here for Digital Assets at ARK Invest. Today we're going to go through Bitcoins and see what's new since then. So I'm going to press play and see how it goes. So my first key takeaway uh, out of 2024 and going into 2025 is the success of the Bitcoin Spot ETF launch in the US. Uh, this has been the most successful ETF launch in history. And to give you an idea of why, um, the cumulative flows into Bitcoin ETF surpassed, at the very least on the first month, every single ETF launch in the last 30 years. And this is about 6,000 ETF launches. So, yeah, on that, the update on the Bitcoin spot ETFs, um, year to date, so running 2025 as of the time of recording, which is uh, um, June 26th. 2025, the AUM of the Bitcoin spot ETF has increased um, by 27.7 billion. Yes, plus um, that pretty much marking a 26% increase year to date, which is still quite impressive, um, given the you know the success I already mentioned in, in earlier in the year. So let's keep watching. The second main takeaway would be Bitcoin's volatility. Volatility hit an all-time low at about 42% rolling on a yearly basis. So that 42% today, as of time of recording, um, is about 50 on a yearly basis, again. Um, so it's basically um, an eight percentage point increase, uh, given that we've had some upside um, over the year and some you know, market volatility, not only in Bitcoin, but in the whole asset, uh, asset in all asset classes, um, I think it's still quite low on a relative basis. Just to give a, a sense of per, uh, perspective here, uh, compared to let's say very volatile years for Bitcoin, this is uh, 2011 and 2012. Yearly volatility of Bitcoin could go as high as 200 percent, um, at least over 100, peaking at 200 percent. So right now we're at 50. It's basically a fourth of uh, the the maximum of that. I think it, it just speaks to Bitcoin's, um, you know, uh, maturity uh, and institutionalization over time. I, I think it's it, it makes the, the the asset much more appealing um, across uh, across the the risk appetites in the market. You know, from volatility traders to pension funds and so on. Um, this aligns with our expectations of Bitcoin be improving risk-adjusted returns over time. Um, volatility has been dropping uh, or trending down ever since Bitcoin's inception, yes. pretty consistently, Confirmed. and especially over a long-term time horizon. And last but not least, so a few things to add here, especially in a very a quite crazy year we've had. Um, not only volatility is still relatively low, from 42 to 50 percent on a yearly basis, but also we have to put now Bitcoin in context of, let's say, gold and the S&P. So we have the 50 percent of Bitcoin. Compare that to a volatility in gold and, and, and the S&P, which could range between 10 to 30 percent, average it out to a 20 percent per year. Um, so Bitcoin is still, uh, you know, higher than S&P and gold in terms of, of variance, uh, but it's getting to be uh, uh, you know that multi-year institutional grade asset that pretty much is appealing to the most conservative and risk averse investor. Um, I thought that was like particularly interesting, especially this year, which has been crazy not only for Bitcoin but also equities and gold. Um, Additionally, it's not only about volatility. I'll, I'll just mention that, you know, even going through the tariff wars um, earlier in the year and now with the recent, um, the start of the U.S.-Israel-Iran conflict, um, even with that, Bitcoin has reacted quite well, at, even against the S&P. So um, looking at my notes here, Bitcoin um, is up about 10% against the S&P year-to-date, which I thought was quite interesting, uh, especially in a uh, risk-off year, if you want to call it that. I think this just speaks, again, 
to Bitcoin's maturity and to its mercurial qualities in, in, in the sense that sometimes you think it's a risk on asset, but it behaves like a risk off asset. And therefore you have like um, a lack of correlation with other assets, which is great for portfolios. Uh, our three main takeaway in 2024 is of course our updated version of for our 2030 price targets, end of 2030 to be specific. There's three main uh, TAMs that we include in the model. One is institutional investment, which is a narrative that seems to be um, picking up over time, especially with the launch with the uh, Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, the second uh, primary TAM sourcing the Bitcoin price target is digital gold and the narratives related to Bitcoin being seen as a, an improved upon version of gold, a more nimble, easier to transact, uh, better asset version of gold, basically. The third primary TAM we include is emerging market safe haven, especially out of the M2 of um, developing nations um, around the world. Um, and then apart from that, we have three, let's say, secondary TAMs out of which we believe Bitcoin will be accruing a lot of value uh, in the next six years. Uh, the first one is nation state treasuries. Uh, we, also, we already see this happening in El Salvador pretty factually. But on top of that, we believe that um, there's an emerging narrative at a federal and even state level across the world, and especially in the US these days, that set the stage for incremental demand potentially by nation states participating in what could be uh, a sort of space, uh, space, uh, space race or arm race, as we saw in the, in, in the peak Cold War days, but in Bitcoin, in this, in this sense, in Bitcoin adoption, as opposed to, you know, um, any other technological development. Um, the second secondary uh, TAM that we include is corporate treasury. We already see um, several companies, mainly MicroStrategy in this case, leading the way in terms of adopting Bitcoin as part of, uh, as a core component of their business model. Uh, so Bitcoin in this case, not only becomes um, one of the several assets that a lot of companies may, may have in, in their portfolios, uh, it becomes part, a crucial aspect of the value proposition of the, uh, of the company. And we believe that this narrative, and especially in the bull case, uh, um, will, will be very interesting to see play out in the next few years um, and, and see how the, the micro strategy model is replicated in the same or in different fashions by other companies. Well, talking about playing out, um, the corporate strategy part of our Bitcoin valuation has been very interesting to see in 2025. So just to give you a sense of perspective, on 2025 on this specific bucket. Um, during, compared to December 31st of 2024, at that time you had 74 public companies holding about 50 billion in, in Bitcoin um, in their you know, treasuries. Today, as of time of recording, uh, it's about 141 public companies holding about 90 billion. So that, would, th that marks pretty much a, almost a doubling in, 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 the term, in terms of number of companies and a 63% increase uh, in terms of holdings. Um, the, the whole corporate uh, treasury narrative has quite exploded in 2025, um, not only in terms of MicroStrategy and other companies that we're already like implementing this strategy, but also like new, brand new strategies coming online and launching onto the markets like um, 21 Capital, Nakamoto, and so on and so forth. So um, this has been the big explosion uh, for 2025. We have, um, we're watching this um, not only um, as, um, uh, as, as one big component of our, you know, value accrual for Bitcoin, uh, in the short and long term, but also uh, as a sign of, you know, the participation broadly on the market. Uh, uh, um, when, when you look at the NAV, the, 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 the premiums to NAV uh, on these companies relative to their Bitcoin positions, it's quite interesting to see how they are playing out at, mostly at a premium. 
um, giving an additional way to leverage up exposure in Bitcoin for for your retail investor or your family office. So we're watching this market very much so uh, during the rest of the year. Uh, see how it plays out. See how the risks um, that may be um, uh, creating in the market as well. Um, and yeah, let's see how the year ends uh, after all of this. And and the last uh, source of, of capital accrual that we believe will be substantial for Bitcoin is uh, the Bitcoin on-chain financial services. Uh, this is basically what, what is called Bitcoin layers or financial services that are um, put, put on top of Bitcoin or that are, are highly linked to Bitcoin, especially in what is known today as the DeFi world. We believe that Bitcoin's on-chain transparency and ease of use will be a, ma a main source of demand for the asset in establishing a very robust um, financial layer on top of the asset in the coming years. So this is basically uh, the way we look at Bitcoin for the, uh, until 2030. Um, and we're very excited to see what this very robust yet ever-changing asset um, does uh, in the future. Okay, so uh, another interesting thing I would say uh, uh, under the Trump administration that we didn't go over in, the, in, in our initial video is just the regulatory landscape. We see a lot of encouraging um, bills and regulations coming up. The Genius Act included uh, that not only clarify a lot of the regulations regarding to uh, Bitcoin, but also stablecoins um, and other crypto assets like Ethereum and Solana. And incrementally, you know, having the clarity between security-like cryptocurrencies that would fall into the SEC and commodity-like uh, assets like Bitcoin that would go the full would fall in under the CFTC purview. Um, that's also a thing to watch, and it's very incremental and beneficial for the asset class. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. This has been the Bitcoin React uh, uh, this time around. I'll see you next time.